But the goal of our instruction is love from pure heart and the good consciousness is fear of faith. But for some of you straying from these things that turn aside to fruitful discussion, wanting to, be, wanting to be teachers of the law, even though they do not understand either what they are saying or the matter about which they are made confident assertions. But we know that the law is good if one uses it lawfully. Realizing, realizing the fact that law is not made for the righteous person, but for those who are lawless and rebellious, for the ungodly and sinners, and the unholy and profane, and those who kill their fathers and mothers for murder, and the immoral men and homosexuals and kidnappers and liars and perjurers, and whatever else is contrary to the sound teaching, sound teaching, according to the glorious to the glorious gospel of the blessed God with which I have been entrusted. Alright. So Paul says clearly that the goal of our instruction is love from a pure heart, one, but from a good conscience talked about the condemnation and guilt thing and from a sincere faith so having a good heart is important you know we, we have the expression you know bless his heart or bless her heart bless her little heart um, you, you do want a heart that is pure and sometimes you don't always do the right stuff or have the right understanding of customs and courtesies and all the stuff but your, your heart is pure in what you do um, but you also want to have a good conscience and that is the whole uh, guilt condemnation thing so sometimes you have an, a conscience that tells you that you shouldn't be doing something. And that's good because you shouldn't be doing that. Right. Sometimes you have a conscience that's guilty about something you did in the past, but you are no longer that person. Come on. And you can't feel guilty about that's it. Right. That's right. It's, that's good preaching. And, and it's, it's, not just, it's not just sin things. It can be a decision that you made when you were 20 that you're like, that was a bad decision. And now i got to live with it. Or it could be whatever number of things. I, I chose this job over this job. Or, you know, I should have invested in Apple when I had a chance. Or whatever. You know. it's, it's things that you you can't always live on what I did or should have done. So Amen. You, can That's only, good. you can only do what can I do today and what's my next step. And what, do I, what wisdom have I gained from those experiences so that I can make good choices and better decisions now. Um, there is going to be another company that is not Apple that is going to be very rich. And if you want to invest, then ask God, which one should I invest in? And you'll figure it out um, if, that's, if that's the way you roll. So a sincere faith, this is what underlies all this. Because you can have your heart, your big conscience. We know that love is the center of our universe. Um, but faith is what makes it all happen. Come on. That, if we if we don't if we don't subscribe, you know, in today's YouTube world, um, you subscribe. If you want, if you're interested in content <laughs> from a, a, a person or an organization, uh, you like you want to listen to more of what this uh, person or this group has to say or this news channel. I, I listen to some German news channel about what's going on in Ukraine. Uh, you subscribe because you want more of it. We, we subscribe to this gospel. What Brian was just talking about, this, God, this glorious gospel. It's not just the Bible, white, black and white print. It's the good news that God has given us through His Son, Jesus Christ. Yeah. We subscribe to that because we know that there is um, wisdom, understanding. There is uh, cleanness, righteousness, joy, peace, and the Holy Ghost. But there's these things in the gospel that make my life better. And I don't, at some point, you grow up enough, you mature enough to realize that you don't want to just make your life better. You want your life to be better so that you can make other people's Come life on. better. Come on. Right. Whatever power that yep. and look, It's a lot of different ways for different people. But it takes faith subscribing. It takes believing in what the, the bigger picture, believing in what God's done and the work he's given us. One of the challenges we have as Americans, and I, I wasn't sure which way to go with this first, um, I was 
I was thinking, we, we watched this movie, this Christian retreat movie, uh, that has a scene with Jeff and Amy Grant, and it's pretty funny. Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> entertaining. Yes, very good. But it, it caused me to think, and I was talking with Isaac about some things afterwards, uh, or at other times, Isaac and I talked. And I thought, when I was in church camp, when I was a teenager, or went to a, a retreat in high school or college, and you know, you go away and you get fired up, you sing some worship songs, you spend some time, everybody's you know, talking Bible, and you're doing Bible studies, and you're doing fun activities with people that are you know similar minded, that, that, that kind of stuff. And there's usually an evening or a couple of evenings where there's like a campfire or a, an altar call at the end of a service or something, and people would respond. They stand up or they go forward or, or whatever the thing is. And then you come home back to the reality of life, whether it's summer or fall or whatever, and life just kind of goes on the way it was before. And and a lot of times, from my experience, there wasn't a lot of change that came from those experiences. There was excitement and motivation for about a week. And then you just get back to doing the things you do. And the people that you thought, like, you were really impressed to see that person go forward, and that person raise their hands and pray, and you were really, wow, this is awesome. Back to the same old, same old, when, when they get back to whatever, school or college, whatever. Because those emotional moments are not the end game. Right. Those, those emotional moments, even ones that we have here, we have an altar call, it's part of a process. Yes. It, we need that all the time. That, those, those church camp events are not wrong. Right. They should be building. They should be, you know, giving you more opportunities to see, okay, a little more of God's grace, a little more of this righteousness, a little more of my love and, and the way that I treat people. Um, and it's important. But what happens sometimes as Christians, I'll start at that first, sometimes we... Meet a new person, you know. Hey, my name's Chris. Uh, my name's Sid. You know, and uh, so what do you do for that? You, you go to church? How long you go to church? How, wait, what kind of what kind of denomination are you? Like, <laughs> what? Like, have you seen miracles before? Do you believe in speaking in tongues? Like, I'm doing an interview with this this guy, and I'm trying to measure up. Where do I fit compared to this guy? Because if, if this guy, Sid doesn't believe all the things that I believe, then I'm obviously way up on this dude. Like, I've got so much to show him, so much to teach him about the way things really work. And it's it's not just a Christian mindset. I think it's an American mindset. Um, when we were in Iraq, uh, the, you know, some years ago, I had squad leaders, uh, uh, staff sergeants, that, that wanted to take computers and technology to these police stations that didn't even have power for 24 hours a day. And, and teach them how to use computers and how to get all their, you know, their uh, equipment and everything into a computer system and a software, you know, and, and then show them how to do these reports and Excel spreadsheets. And, and we had to finally kind of face the, the facts, like, listen, guys, it, people have been using, you know, carbon copy, triplicate, you know, the ink, the little, the, the little ink paper that goes between the copies for years, and it's fine. Yeah. They it, they can keep their or keep track of their stuff however they want. What's important right. is that they keep track of their stuff. Right. Right. It doesn't matter. So it's like we're trying to take this American way of life, and if you want to do things the right way, you'll do it like we do. Right. It's like no, that's, you know they don't need. They just need to please themselves. <laughs> have government do things. Be be who you are. We just want it to be so that it's not a dictator that is you know that everybody's afraid of. You don't you don't want to have a government that you're afraid of. That's that's no fun. Um, not a way to live. Uh, we'll see how that works in the next 20 or 30 years. <laughs> so, it's the, the thing is, a lot of times when we, uh, if we size up ourselves, it's very easy to size ourselves up based on sin. Well, I, I've been married for a long time, and just married to one woman, and I'm not like that other person. That's not that situation. I, or you think I'm? Uh, I've been going to the right church for ten years now. You know, I went to the wrong church for ten or twenty years, but I'm going to the right church now, and and I'm way better than somebody who's who's been you know who's in the wrong church still. You know, like we we make I'm, I'm making these embellishments because I don't know how many people think like this, but I get concerned. I hear things from people not just here, but I hear things that. It's almost like you you uh, you find some identity in being better than the next guy. Right. Whatever it is, whatever the things are. And Jesus wasn't like that. 
Right. He, he didn't. He came to show us that all you people that are sitting up that, that movie, all you people not sitting on a cushion, he says, because he's in a, a, a yeah, <clears throat> sitting in an arena. He's like, all you people not sitting on a cushion. But it's if if you think that you're something. Um, Jesus came to show us that we are nothing. Like he, when he talked to the Pharisees, the Pharisees thought that they had right. the corner right. of religion. They had it pegged down. They knew the law. They knew the way that things should be. They knew the way your clothing should look. They knew the way that you should yeah. eat your food and the way you should wash your hands. They knew the way you should give your money and all the things. They knew everything. And so Jesus had nothing to tell them, nothing to teach them until he did. And people started listening. And people started, oh my, oh my. And some of them didn't realize it until he was hanging on the cross. Right. And the, and the we did. Yeah. curtain was torn in the temple, and the earth shook, and it got dark for a few hours <laughs> in the middle of the day. Then it was like, oh, truly, this was the Son of God. You know, maybe, maybe I should have listened. Absolutely. And then, and then, after that, after Jesus was resurrected, then there, then there was some facts that they couldn't, they couldn't hide. They couldn't run from. They had to face it or just deny the whole thing and try right. to cover it up. Absolutely. And some of them did that. Some of the religious leaders did that, um, tried to cover it up. Uh, of course, the Romans, had, you know, the religious leaders were trying to cover it up because they didn't want to believe what Jesus said, and they were stuck in their ways. But the Roman government was trying to cover it up because they didn't want an insurrection. They didn't want to, Jesus' body being gone. They didn't want people to actually believe that he had the power that he said he had. And so they tried to cover it up because they didn't want people to get on board and, and go to war. That's what they thought was going to happen. They didn't realize that Jesus didn't come to start a war. No. And Jesus came to make peace. Absolutely. Perfect peace. You're like, whoa, this is exciting. So I, I just want to share with you guys just real quickly. Um, I drink a lot of coffee in the morning. We can go. We can go. So, real quickly, I, I looked up uh, lists of sins, because I've been intrigued by this for, for years now. So, one, one of the things that we have to balance when we talk about grace, okay? We've been, we've been talking about the grace message, and that means there were things to every person in here. The grace message for, for 10 or 12, 13 years. Um, and we've been walking that out. What's that look like? One of the concerns that people have um, who, who know word of faith, life, and lifestyle and teaching and rigidity and people who know grace, uh, the grace message, uh, be fathering, you know, being for sons of a living God. Sometimes there's a concern that we're just going to throw the rules out and you can just kind of be who you want and do what you want and there's no penalty. And I, I was talking, when I was talking with Isaac this week, he mentioned, he's like, Dad, I, the things that you compare life to before the last 10, 15 years, I don't know. I don't it's not it's not my life. I don't I don't know what you're comparing to. I don't know I don't know church the way that you think of it. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, that's a very important point because <laughs> quickly, <laughs> quickly, I mean we're only talking a few years from now, the, the generation that's coming up after Isaac has no clue. All they know is grace and whatever else we've taught. Yeah. You know, like that, no understanding of that. There's a huge generational change. I actually read an article this morning. Um, I shared it with my oldest daughter, who is uh, pretty much millennial. Um, but it was it was talking about how there's a the millennials are losing their savvy on on social media because uh, they do things that that don't make sense to Gen Z, the next the next generation. Uh, TikTok is a Gen Z thing. Like they got a corner master. And so if you get on TikTok and you have like a little pause because you're uncomfortable about if you're recording or not, they, you show yourself as a millennial easily because, because Gen Z, they don't have to do this stuff. And I've had the articles full of really interesting things, but I'm thinking, when we think old people, and, I, and I'm, not a, I'm not a veteran or a baby boomer, but when we think of oh, this social media platform, we just lump it all into the internet. It's all the internet. But there are, there are definitely categories of capability and affluence inside the internet, inside of social media. Um, and so for me to, to judge, you know, somebody who's younger than me, they must, whatever, know how to or do this, whatever. It's, it's foolish to judge them. And, and I may meet somebody who's 20 years old who doesn't have any social media because they don't like it. They don't, and I've met people like that. 
So I have to be careful. What I'm, what I'm getting at is we have to be careful to measure up with other people because measuring up doesn't get us anywhere. Right. We need to be gracious and love people and understand if, if somebody came in uh, and was sitting on, I'm going to say the back row, I'm going to say the fourth row. Somebody came in and sat next to Leah back there. And they were obviously living a sinful lifestyle. Let's just say you can tell that however that works out. All right? Obviously living a sinful lifestyle. It, Jesus did not, and there's nowhere in scripture where Jesus went back to this person and says, you know what, if you'll come to this church and read all these scriptures and um, pray the right way and wear the right clothes, then you'll be saved and your life will be fixed. But Jesus didn't talk to people that way. He talked to people out of, this is who God is. This is who I am. All right? I'm going I'm to read a couple of those for you. But... I, I started that just quickly because there are several lists of sins in the Bible, and I counted 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. There are 11 scriptures in the Bible that have anywhere from three sins listed to, uh, I think the biggest one was 21. Romans chapter 1 has a, a, a list of sins. It's 21 sins. And this is the things that you read that, like, like uh, Moran just read, there's uh, people that are envious and people that are homosexual and people that are lascivious and people that are drunk and people that, you know, things things of all this nature. And my colors didn't print on my paper at the moment. I haven't color coded. <laughs> but there, there's these lists of sins and all of them have a different purpose, but a lot of times from uh, again, Isaac, preachers that Isaac hasn't heard, uh, from days of old, it's like if you, if you press into Jesus, then Jesus will save you from all these ugly things, all these ugly things. But, but this, the context of those scriptures was not, hey, stop doing all these things and right. be a Christian. Or if you if you press into Jesus, then you'll stop. All this will just go away. It was, these are the types of people that will not inherit the kingdom of God. Because these types of people are not in the kingdom of God. Well, are we these types of people? Or are we children of God? Once you're a child of God, you're not these types of people. Good. You may do some things that look a lot like, smell a lot like those things, but it shouldn't be your heart to, right, yeah. to, to live that way. All right? There, there was reasons at one point in Revelation, and this is, Revelation is a little tricky for me. At one point, there, where the writer of Revelation says, uh, you do these things, these sins, you're going to be thrown into the lake of fire. Yep. All right? I don't know exactly how to deal with that. But don't live that way. Let's just say that. <coughs> And then um, a lot of there's several of the scriptures, three of those lists out of those ten, ten uh, lists of sins, three of those are this was your former life. This is the way you used to be. You were this kind of people. Or this is how we started out. This is why God gave people over to the lust of their flesh because they, they didn't acknowledge him. Uh, I think it's specifically they exchanged the truth of God for a lie as Romans 1 says. They worshiped the creature over the creator. Right. So, so Paul is showing us there in Romans Get your attention on the right things, believe the right things, and then all this other stuff is not with something you need to worry about. Um, so we're, it's, we're not in a, in a race or a competition to see who can get the furthest from hell the fastest. Right. That's, that's good. That's, we're, in a, and we're in a race to embrace God and His fullness and take as much of it as we possibly handle it and wash in it, bathe in it, eat it, chew it, you know, everything we can possibly do to, to get a hold of God's grace. Uh, so that's ten scriptures. Only ten scriptures uh, show those lists of sins like what Moran read earlier. But there are 30 verses discussing our righteousness, who, who our righteousness is and how we are righteous in Christ. There's 20 verses about our identity in Christ, who we are in Christ. Uh, let me offer to these verses. Go ahead, go ahead, brother, up there. Uh, I think Romans 6.18. Okay. Having been freed from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. Amen. That that is that's who we are now. Yeah, if you choose, you don't have to be. God didn't make you become a slave of righteousness. That's right. You have a choice. You become a slave of righteousness. That that's a strong word. Even in our language today, that's a strong word. But I don't want anything else but righteousness. I may not do everything and think everything perfect, but I don't want anything else but righteousness because I know righteousness is where my future is. Righteousness is what God's blessing is for me. Righteousness is how I'm going to minister to other people. Right. That's what I want. Uh, 
Um, I don't, and I don't get there by comparing how much closer I am than somebody else. Come on. Right. There is no equation for that in the Bible. Uh, next verse is the, about identity in Christ. <clears throat> but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of Him who has called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. Amen. And then God's love and security for us, 40 verses in the Bible on God's love and security. But in all things, we overwhelmingly conquer through Him who loved us. Keep going. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That is, that is assuring. It's life-giving. And we have the opportunity to give that to other people yeah. instead of judgment, instead of, hey, if you'll do it the way I do it, then you'll be closer to having this. That, <laughs> no, that, does, that is not life-giving. Life-giving is not be like me. Life-giving is be like Christ. You know, pursue Christ. All right, 20 verses on being God's family. Go to the next one. Blessed are the peace, peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Eight, Romans 8.14 says, For all who are led by the Spirit of God, they are sons of God. John 1 says that we have become given the right to become sons of God. Amen. It's the right. It's not, a, It's not. you know, start going to church and praying and reading your Bible, and you're, then you'll be a son of God. It, it says you have the right to become sons of God. That is a, an active choice where you walk in a choice. I am becoming a son of God. I'm walking it out every day. I'm learning how to be a son of God. Uh, that that's where our uh, identity is. So there's a, there's a few instances. I'm just going to give one. I, I wanted to think of about 20, but th there's a challenge where the rubber meets the road between grace and law. All right. The, the verse that I read. Can you go back to that, uh, Sandra? The first Timothy verse at the beginning. Uh, keep on going. From it's from pure heart instruction. Uh, turned aside for this discussion. This, this is the first time that we covered this when I was in the series on first time. Keep going. I think it's around nine. Uh, the law is made for a righteous person. Now, it's not made for a righteous person, but for those who are lawless and rebellious, for ungodly sinners, unholy, profane. The law is written for people who are minded about competing and doing good works and trying right. to do what's right. Correct. It's just like if, if we put a lock on that door to keep people out from getting into this building when we're not here, it's only as good as the lock, right? Yeah. And it's not going to work for an un a dishonest person who wants to break in here. Right. Yeah. That lock's not going to stop them. No. Correct. It's only going to stop people that say, oh, they, I must not be able to go in here. Right. Or maybe somebody who used to go here two years ago and they show up and, you know, whatever, want to get in. Oh, and I don't know the code to the key box. It's out there by the door. What? It's just going to be that type of person that is actually going to help. Yeah. Otherwise, if a person that wants to break in here, they can break in here. There's lots of ways. Lots of ways to do it. We've seen lots of ways over the years. <laughs> <laughs> it, the law is is to, to separate in a civil a court where um, if I steal somebody's stuff, I can go in front of a judge and the judge can say, you have to give that back or you've got to repay that. Right? It's because a person stole somebody's stuff. It, it should be common sense that you don't steal people's stuff, but it happens, right? So God has a law, and this is a whole other teaching. I could probably spend a month on, on this at least. But God has a reason for why he gave Moses the law that he gave Moses. But by the time we get to the New Testament, Jesus is saying, listen, people, that obeying the Ten Commandments and doing it all right doesn't mean anything. Good. Good job. You, you, you honored your mother and father. Good job. You, you rested on the Sabbath. Great, you didn't steal, you didn't kill. Great. That doesn't mean anything. You're a good person. That's all it means. But if you want what God gave us in the garden, that we're created in His image, and everything He has is open and available to us, everything, every good thing He has is available to us, then you need something better than the law. Right. You need something better than the law. And, and it's not, I don't think that He held it back. Until there, there's some there's some scriptures about veils and some coverings and timing and that kind of thing, but I don't think he held it back because David was tapping into it. He was seeing something that that was better than what he had, and he believed in it. He, and he was out there fighting wars and taking ground, you know, destroying enemies, uh, doing what he did as a as a warrior. And he was still saying, 
I love these quiet mornings when I wake up early in the morning and just spend time with, with the Lord, singing songs that, you know, that, I, that I've known, or songs that I've written. There was something special about that. Daniel, you know, going in uh, the lion's den, the shepherd, Meshach, and Bendigo, and the fire furnace, there were several people throughout the Old Testament. They tapped into who God was, and they knew his heart. And Abraham had faith before there was any law at all. Abraham had faith to hear what God was saying and go. Just take off, drop everything, and just go uh, to a new place. So it wasn't it wasn't God was trying to hide this from us and, you know, <laughs> I got a secret thing. <laughs> in in uh, 27 AD, even though before there was a calendar, right? 27 AD, I'm going to send my son to die on a cross. And, uh, going to be born of a virgin, and that's going to fix everything. But I'm going to wait about 2,000 years so these people can just suffer. Like, it's it's not like that. He's, he's a gracious God. He's it just the timing, the timing, however God's timing is. I don't fully understand God's timing. There was a whole thing, a lot of things built up over 4,000 years before Jesus came that made Jesus' story, made his life, made his uh, message be, be something that was valuable. Because if he would have done that earlier, then you could tell by the time you got with it, the people weren't ready to receive that. The, the world was not ready for Jesus 150 years earlier. The world was ready for Jesus when he came. And now we have the benefit of all of it wrapped up in one package that we, we call Bible and the experiences that we have in the Holy Spirit to know what it means to live in Christ, crucified in Christ. One in the Spirit. One in uh, the flesh with, with Jesus. We are his bride. He is our groom. So now we understand a lot better. But I'm humble enough to know that there's a lot I don't understand. Right. And I'm going to keep pursuing. And if the person next to me, uh, Sid, Sid's coming along next to me, if Sid is like out in La La Land and doesn't know these things, then if I can befriend Sid first, befriend, right. and say, hey, we're human, each other, we're both human, and God created both of us in his image, and I see that there's things in your life that um, probably show you need some help. If, if we can build a friendship, and then that, and then Sid looks to me and says, I need some help, then I can help Sid. Right. But I don't gain anything by going to Sid and telling him how messed up he is. Right. That right. doesn't. Yes. Yes. Hello. So, and I'm saying this because it happens inside the church. Yes. And it happens yes. outside oh, the church. Right. It on. happens in our families. I mean, they right. see it. Um, my sister, J.L., my, my wife got a promotion ceremony Friday. My wife got to meet my colleagues at work. There is a, a group, <laughs> I think they call themselves the cackle or something, but there is a group of women in our office that are always preparing food for uh, somebody's promotion. Somebody's always leaving, somebody's always you know, coming, a new person, somebody's you know, getting an award or whatever, and they're always thinking, you know, but, or someone, we, got, we had a baby shower the other day, Somebody's having a baby uh, in a few weeks, in one week. Uh, we had uh, whatever the, the things, but we're the people that are in our office. A lot of them feel like we're family. That's that's why they enjoy working there, right? Um, but Jennifer got to see how JL is in part of that and how she works the crowd. They call her J Spin. That's her nickname because she always has a positive light on everything. She always has grace, grace to give to people, and she never assumes things um, about people or all the bad stuff that these ladies sometimes want to talk about. Um, she has a different way of spinning, or let's say you know, the work that comes. She has a way of spinning it so that this is good. This is good for us. We, we can do this. Um, and it reminds me when and JL got to meet these, these ladies. Love her, and so Jennifer got to meet the ladies that, as they relate to JL, my sister. Jeff's sister. So, it is grace upon grace. That's what wins. And it's, and it's not, um, I think, the other challenge when we read about these things, um, what did I hear, where did I see it recently? Sometimes we think that making a, a decision, let's say you, you want to give to a charity and you want it to be publicized, you want everybody to know about it, or let's say you want to be connected, like you know, there's a speaker. Let's say there's a speaker up here on Sunday morning that had, that is really famous. Let's say like uh, uh, Johnson. Let's see somebody you listen to. Creflo Dollar. Creflo Dollar. Creflo Dollar is here at New Song Church on Sunday morning, <laughs> yes. and you've been listening to him.
for years, and you want to come up and be that guy that gets to shake your couple dollars in, and you're like, I want some anointing. I've been listening to you. You know, you want to be you want to be that person in that moment. But if that moment doesn't change your life and affect the way you live your life, then it doesn't mean anything. That's right. That's true. It doesn't mean anything. If we have to do things for the for the long haul, you know, make decisions for the long haul. We we make we wake up every morning and we do our morning routine, whatever that looks like, for the because of who we are. Right. All right. And then when we get the opportunity to be in spotlight, whether it's good or bad, sometimes you know bad things happen. Um, it, it comes down to why you do what you do that really matters. Yeah. That, that, that's what becomes evident. When, whenever the scandals hit the, the headlines, whenever things happen in the church, uh, it's not because one person made one bad choice necessarily. It's probably because they took a lot of risks with the way they lived and got caught. So we don't, we don't want to live in a, in a life that is taking risks morally or ethically. That, that doesn't win anything. Uh, we live lives that are that are trustworthy and honest and uh, pursuing the right things, the righteousness that I was talking about. So that was a, a lot of jumble. Uh, but my, my hope today is to say that there is a lot of sin in the world, but all the sin in the world and the people that don't do everything as great as you do, it doesn't, it doesn't really mean anything. It doesn't. It, there's, been, there's, been, there's been lots of sin. There will be lots of sin. And someday, when there is a new heaven and a new earth, None of that will matter. It'll only be between us and God. Worship. We're going to have our brothers and sisters in Christ there. We're going to be. We're going to be married. We're going to live that post-marriage life with God. Uh, us and the and the groom, and life will be awesome. And, and what it may look like, I don't know. I can only imagine. I love the song. I can only imagine. Amen. Don't know what it's going to look like. But there's not going to be the selfishness and the hatred and. The other stuff that we deal with today. Um, so let it be what it is. You be you, and, and be be a light. Be an example. So praise God. If you guys want to stand with me, I will pray. Does somebody have something else to add?